Alright, so welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the caution box. So I'm going to be ripping this out of here and I'm going to pull it apart on the workbench and I'll show you how I made it. It's a pretty simple panel. I'm also going to show you how I cut and engraved the front indicator part. Um, I've seen a lot of people make these and there's you can see the white text. I basically reverse engrave this so you can't see that when it's not on. You can only just barely make out the text that's in there but when it lights up you can read it pretty well. So the plans for this are publicly available. The link is in the description. Um, you can download them. It's my design. It's by no means supposed to be a replica of the one in an A10. So the one in the A10 is a collection of individual indicators, whereas mine is just one big panel that runs it all. It's one sheet of plastic that I've engraved. The reason I need to redo the front of it though is because somebody who downloaded it pointed out a glaring issue that I've never noticed, and that is that there's a typo in it. You can see that there is two left aileron tab indicators where the one on the right should be the right aileron tab indicator. Um, that goes to show that in the five years this has been in the cockpit, I've never had a right aileron tab failure. So I've never seen that indicator light um, other than when I'm holding the test button like I am right now. So what I'll do now is I'll rip it out of the cockpit and I'll show you how I made it. So here is the caution box out of the cockpit. You can see it's a really simple panel. Um, it looks like a spaghetti nightmare. That's only because it's so squeezed together. This is a Fidget 64 LED card. So there was no custom programming. There was no anything to get this one working. Literally all it is is these cables come with it. All I had to do was solder on LEDs. All right, you can see when I pull this apart, it's just a network of spaghetti. So all those cables come with the clips that go into this card. Um, so all I had to do was snip the ends off and solder LED tabs to them. Okay, so one of the drawbacks of this card is you can't share the earth. Um, so every LED has two cables going up to it, which was why it looks like a complete mess. But that card means you can run 64 LEDs um, and program them in DCS using a program called Helios, which I'll show you in a second, um, to get them to light up when the game sends it a signal. I don't actually have to pull that apart or remove any of the LEDs or anything for this, so I'm gonna screw that back together and just remove the top plate. Okay, so you can see that these standoffs which hold the back plate on also go straight through the panel and hold the whole panel together. So I just need some Allen keys in there to remove the top surface. All right, so now that those screws are undone, this whole top part here will just lift off. Uh, and that is just a spacer, which is stuck together just because it was paint. These things here are just small cutouts of plastic. Um, sorry, wait for it to focus. Uh, nothing special about them. It's a translucent white. The only purpose it serves is to diffuse those LEDs. So these LEDs, if you just left them like that, you can see there's two per indicator. Um, when, you, when they illuminated, you can actually see that there's two LEDs and it doesn't look very good. So the only purpose these things serve is to diffuse that light. You can also see that half of them are burnt and they look terrible. That, that was burnt in the laser. These little, this thing here was the first thing I ever did on my cheap Chinese K40 laser and I wasn't even using the upgrades then. I was just using the manual knob to set power, which is why half of them burned. But I never even see them, never use it, and they still do the job, so I'm all happy. So the reason I cut individual little squares out and not just use one sheet of translucent white is because if you used one sheet, the light would bleed into the other indicators. So just say you had one indicator light up, you would see the light bleeding around these ones as well. Um, so you, you sort of need individual black to stop it from bleeding out. Okay, so here we are in the caution box. You can see the layers that I've got. Um, first thing I need to do is fix up the error, which is right here. You can see there's two left aileron tabs. So I just need to quickly jump in here and change that one to an R. All right. All right, so if I just quickly turn off the engraving, uh, that right there is what I'm going to cut now. This panel is the one that needs to be replaced, so I'm going to cut that out of three. You can see that the yellow squares are a different power of cut. So they are only lightly cut to mark the surface and to give you that grid. Um, and they also cut through the paper that's protecting it so it acts as a mask. So when I paint the whole thing black, these little yellow squares will still be paper. So when I peel them off, it'll be clear squares. It'll make sense in a second. So I'll jump over to the laser now and I'll um, show you how I do that. 
All right, so here we are in the LaserCAD software. Um, you can see that the yellow layer is a cut, but it's at 150 speed and only 40 power. So I don't want to cut through all the plastic. I just want to cut through the mask on top of it. Uh, and then the black layer is the actual cut that I want. So that's really slow, 12 speed and 60 power. So it'll go the right way through the plastic. So I'll just quickly download that. Throw the plastic in the laser. Actually, what I'll so what I'll do first is I'll just quickly drag this over to one side so I can save on plastic. So when I lay my A4 sheet down, I can probably cut two out of this one A4 sheet. Um, so to minimize waste, I'll just move that over there and then I'll download it. And then we'll move over to the laser. Okay, so here we are at the laser and this is the plastic I'm using, three millimeter um, acrylic and it is transparent green in color. So I'll just place this in about here just so it's right on the edge to save material. And then if I just come over here and push the test button, um, it will just run the outline, so you can make sure that it's gonna fit on your material. I think I'll probably get, yeah, I'll get two out of this if I need it. Just move it over just a slight. Alright, so I'll close the lid and I'll let it run. Bear with me while I try and clamp my phone so you can see with the lid closed. So there we have it. Okay, so here we are, um, fresh out of the laser. You can see that I've just lightly engraved those squares and the reason I've done that is so when I peel this off, You end up with that. What I'm going to do now is paint the entire thing, including the back. Okay, so here it is all painted. You can see that I've left the paper on there and painted the whole thing matte black. Before I did that, I glued that top layer on. Uh, the only purpose that serves is to give it a bit of depth. I did that first so I didn't have to paint it and then worry about sticking this on top of paint. It's better to glue them together and paint them all in one big go. Um, so the back of it's not engraved yet. So all, all I'm going to do now is I can pull these stickers off now because I don't really need them but you can see that when you gently get that label, it's there. So you'll peel that off and that's just green plastic. It looks black because the back of it's black, obviously. Um, so now I'll reverse engrave the text onto the back of this. So when you turn it over, you'll see the text. So I don't need the yellow layer for this, so I'll delete that. Uh, all I need is this section. Now all I'm gonna do is mirror that because I'll be engraving from the rear, like that. And then I'll save that as a DXF. And I'll open that in um, LaserCAD. Okay, so you can see I've got it imported in the laser cad here. First thing I need to do is change this cut layer. So I want to just lightly mark on a piece of scrap MDF that's in the laser, the outline and the hole, so I can line the panel up. And then I'm engraving the red layer at 250 speed, 50 power, which is what I always do. So I'll just speed this up to say 230. So all I'm going to do now is just quickly run that outside cut. I'll down that, 
I'll download that to the machine to score a piece of MDF that's in it. All right, so here we are at the machine. I just remembered one thing. I usually use a piece of scrap MDF in there, and then I engrave lightly on the outside, and I've got a place to put the panel. Um, for this one, however, I just remembered that because it's glued, too glued together, it's actually taller. Um, so I'm not using that MDF, because otherwise the panel will be so far up that it won't be focused on the laser at the right height for cutting the um, for engraving the text sorry so I'm just going to engrave that outline into some masking tape that I've laid on the bed um, so I'll still get the lines of where it's supposed to be but it's a little to no height and I can still use those lines to mark it out so I'll just quickly turn on the air pump close the lid and fire up the laser and engrave that <laughs> So you can see, just turn off that there so I can talk. Now I've got a way to line that up to where it's supposed to be. I'll get that in the right position and I'll run the engrave profile. Alright, so now that I've got the panel in the laser, all I need to do is turn off the cut layer, light up the engraved layer, make sure that's set right. 50 to 50 X unilateralism, yep. Download that into the machine and run it. Alright, so she's all finished. All I need to do now is just clean the back of that, blast it with a bit of air to get the residue off and um, clear out all that, and then peel off all those stickers. You can already see the engine start cycle one there. When it's backlit, you can see it. But when it's dark, it's pretty hard to make out. And there's the finished panel. Um, you can see that I obviously reverse engraved it, um, and you can make out the lighting when it's backlit, um, but when it's sort of flush against it and there's no light coming behind it it just looks black um so what i'll do now is i'll put that on get it back in the aircraft This panel will be getting an upgrade shortly, being that I'm going to remove this Fidgets LED 64 because if I had my time again, I wouldn't do this. Don't forget, when, this was one of the first things that I ever made, and when I made this, DCS BIOS didn't exist. Arduino wasn't really a thing. There was no way to get it com to communicate with DCS. Um, so Fidgets was the only way I could drive so many LEDs with the PC. Um, I've had nothing but dramas with it, to tell you the truth. Uh, for some reason, it hates USB 3, so I have to plug this one separately to my computer, not in all the USB ports that are in my cockpit, so there's one extra cable for this. And the other problem is the newer version of Helios, the software, which runs all my gauges in my cockpit and basically every switch in the cockpit, no longer supports the fidgets card. So I'm using a very, very old version of Helios, not the current version. Um, I'd much prefer to use the current version. So what I'm gonna do is rip that card out, put an, a, um, a matrix in there, an LED matrix with a, um, what is it, a 7612 chip or whatever they are, and an Arduino. So this will be run by DCS BIOS shortly, probably by the end of the year. 
um, and that will let me upgrade to the newer version of Helios, which comes with a whole bunch of other, other benefits. Um, so watch out for that video. When I pull this apart again, replace that, and I'll show you how I use it, um, or the differences. Anyway, so that's the completed project. What I'm going to do now is just put it back in the aircraft and test it, but I'm sure it will work because I haven't changed anything except that front cover. And now I no longer have the left aileron tab typo. I've got a right aileron tab there now. Anyway, thanks heaps for watching. Um, stay tuned, there's more content coming. I'm um, planning some other videos and working on some other stuff right now. Thanks for watching.